So, let us uh, uh, see the characteristics of uh, fuels uh, starting from uh, gaseous fuels. Okay. So, gaseous fuels basically can be classified as a cleaner fuel than uh, when you compare that with the liquid or uh, solid fuels. Uh, this is because uh, gaseous fuels are uh, lighter and they can be stored in uh, compressed form and uh, when you use this, we can just pass it on through uh, some uh, moisture trapper or some filters etc. and we can uh, just directly feed into the combustion chamber. There is no pre-processing or anything required in this basically. So, gaseous fuels are much cleaner than liquid and uh, solid fuels and can be directly used in burners and uh, burners in the combustion chambers. Okay. When you say liquid fuel, liquid fuel has to be vaporized and uh, it, uh, the vapors have to be uh, supplied or maybe you have to atomize it and uh, um, the, the droplet should be uh, supplied to the combustion chamber and so on. So, though those pre-processing etc are not required for the gaseous fuels. So, in that way the usage of gaseous fuels are much uh, easier when compared to the uh, condensed fuels. Uh, on the other hand, if you take gaseous fuels, they have low density. So, the low density basically uh, uh, causes a, a storage issue. See, for example, if you want to uh, store uh, a, a required amount of uh, gaseous fuel, we have to compress this and uh, store in pressure vessels. And uh, these pressure vessels, uh, proper design has to be taken care uh, when designing these pressure vessels and proper regulators have to be used. Uh, so, to control the flow from the pressure vessels to the combustion chamber and so on. So, valves, regulators, etc. are required. So, it should be uh, maintained leak proof and uh, other uh, uh, design parameters have to be uh, considered for that. So, uh, on one hand, it can be directly used in combustion chamber. On the other hand, the energy density is much lower. So, uh, it can be easily used only for the uh, stationary applications, not in uh, mobile applications. So, that is one of the points we should uh, keep in mind. So, the fuels are classified as I uh, told before, the fuels are classified into fossil fuels which are naturally occurring and uh, man-made fuels, synthetic fuels. And uh, when you see gaseous fuels, uh, gaseous fossil fuels are uh, uh, the, uh, the commonly uh, got uh, gaseous fossil fuels are natural gas which contains mostly methane CH4 and uh, uh, liquefied petroleum gas LPG petroleum gas you can say it has several uh, hydrocarbons in it starting from butane, propane, uh, butene so uh, straight chain and uh, cyclic hydrocarbons to some extent then uh, saturated unsaturated hydrocarbons and so on. So, these are uh, uh, heavier than uh, heavy hydrocarbons and much heavier than air actually. Uh, when compared to natural gas with this methane, methane is lighter than air. Okay. So, we also get some refinery gases when you refine the crude oil and uh, those uh, mainly contain carbon monoxide and hydrogen and they are used uh, within the refinery itself for uh, heating purposes. Okay, so, natural gas and uh, LPG, the liquid petroleum gas are uh, commercially uh, given for the vendors and uh, LPG, you know that it is uh, used for uh, domestic uh, cooking purposes. So, when you uh, come to say uh, synthetic gases, synthetic gases are uh, man-made. So, we use uh, coal or uh, solid fuels like uh, sugarcane bagas and uh, say rice straw, wheat bran, wheat straw, etc. And uh, you make uh, gases products from that. So, what you basically do is you partially burn them. So, that uh, in, the, in the rich mode of uh, partial combustion, it is called gasification, you get uh, gases, fuel gases like CO, H2, etc. from that. So, they are called synthetic gases basically. So, coal gas, producer gas, synthetic gas are uh, uh, formed from reactors which are designed to produce such gases and uh, some um, composition difference will be there in the uh, pr produced gases basically. However, the, the common uh, feed the, the is coal and biomass like solid fuels. Okay. On the other hand, the biogas is derived from animal and plant wastes say like cow dung, then uh, some vegetables uh, and uh, vegetable wastes and other uh, plant wastes etc. So, when we ferment this under some conditions, you get biogas. Okay. So, the, these are man-made uh, things. So, you can see that uh, the solid fuels are used primarily to generate these gases, synthetic gas or biogas. You can, uh, you take a solid fuel like coal or biomass and do this. So, actually why we do this? Because actually coal uh, or biomass uh, to burn it completely, lot of challenges are present. 
So, it is easy to convert into gases and use the gases in the chamber, combustion chambers because you can see that gaseous fuels are uh, easily used directly you can be directly used in the combustion chambers. So, due to that uh, producing gaseous fuels will be advantageous for us. See in gas turbine engines and so on, it is easy to use uh, gaseous fuels. So, just uh, use the solid fuels to uh, create or uh, produce. Uh, gaseous fuels like synthetic gas or use uh, animal and plant waste use biogas and use it in several applications. So, man made fuels can be uh, classified like this. Uh, so, natural gas basically I told you it is uh, methane. So, molecular weight will be around 16 kilogram per kilo mole and its calorific value is good say 50,000 kilojoule per kg to 55,000 kilojoule per kg. When you compare this with methane, it about 90 to 90 percent is methane. So, it is uh, almost the methane's calorific value you get. And uh, it is lighter than air. So, air molecular weight is uh, 28.8 and uh, here you can see this is uh, 16. So, it is lighter than air. And uh, if you compress this natural gas, you can use it for automobile applications. So, CNG vehicles are available in India. So, uh, we can uh, drive vehicles using the compressed natural gas. Uh, petroleum gas basically as I told you uh, several hydrocarbons, heavy hydrocarbons C3s and C4s are involved in this uh, has a molecular weight of about uh, uh, 55 kilogram per kilo mole which is uh, much higher than uh, uh, the air uh, atmospheric air uh, molecular weight which is 28.8. So, now uh, this is uh, heavier, so heavier uh, gas and uh, more, this uh, calorific value is about 45,000 kilojoules uh, per kilogram to 50,000 kilojoules per kilogram uh, which is uh, comparable to what uh, you get from natural gas but slightly less than that. Okay? Uh, when you compress this uh, petroleum gas which is a mixture of several gases um, to a pressure of about 6 bar you, you, you liquefy it so it becomes liquid and now this liquid can be stored in uh, uh, tanks and uh, a simple regulator can be used to release this and uh, when the pressure drops to atmospheric pressure, the liquid uh, vaporizes instantaneously to gas. So, this is one of the advantages that uh, very low pressures like 6 bar can be used to compress these gases to get liquids and this liquid can be stored and uh, again you can use it for automobile applications also apart from uh, cooking applications which is mostly used in India. Now, you can come to the synthetic gases, man-made uh, things. Uh, where you use coal, biomass, etc., gasify that and produce uh, gases. The predominant uh, fuel components in that are uh, CO and H2. You can see the carbon monoxide and uh, hydrogen are the uh, main uh, fuel components. But you get, see, since you are partially burning that, you get CO2 and you get uh, nitrogen because air is separated as an oxidizer. So, you get nitrogen. So, if you use only, say, oxygen, pure oxygen and say steam as gasifying agents, you will not get nitrogen. So, that means that when nitrogen uh, fraction decreases, your caloric value will increase. Similarly, if you do not burn it fully, then you will get uh, lower uh, CO2 and more CO. So, the fuel component, the fractions of the fuel component can be increased by controlling the process. But anyway, you have to, uh, the, the cost is involved in this. If you want to use pure oxygen, then uh, that is going to be costlier than using uh, atmospheric air. So, but you, one thing is very clear that we are going to use uh, uh, fuels like uh, say rice straw, then uh, sugarcane burgers, etc., which are otherwise not used anywhere. So, if you use those and produce this, you get benefit of producing some gases which can be used in several applications. The only requirement is you need to design your burners. Uh, to use these gases and have stable flames out of them. So, the producer gas or a, you can take any example. So, I am just taking the example of producer gas has 16 to 20 percent of uh, CO and uh, 16 to 18 percent of hydrogen and uh, uh, 8 to 10 percent of uh, CO2, but you can see that rest will be mostly nitrogen. So, that is the main uh, disadvantage. Nitrogen is not a fuel, even CO2 is not a fuel, it, they are inerts and uh, CO2 can absorb uh, heat because it is a radiation absorption uh, species. So, it can uh, absorbing species basically. So, it can uh, absorb heat and uh, radiate to the far field. Uh, nitrogen and uh, carbon dioxide will uh, 
take the heat from the flame. So that these are the disadvantages and calorific value comes down because uh, of the increased presence of these two species. But as I told, nevertheless you can use this for several applications because you will get decent calorific value. So that is the minimum calorific value which can be uh, made available so that we can use it for several applications. We always do not need to use very high calorific values like uh, that of uh, natural gas or LPG. We can also work with lower calorific values uh, properly design your combustion chamber for that. You have to uh, supply the fuel at a uh, uh, higher rate and uh, try to accomplish the uh, stable combustion. So, biogas contains uh, mostly methane but uh, the inert substance there is carbon dioxide. So, you just ferment the waste, animal waste and uh, plant uh, vegetation base, wastes and uh, due to that fermentation you will get uh, biogas uh, which is a combination of methane and carbon dioxide. Uh, 60 to 80, so based upon the process and the source, varying amounts of uh, methane and uh, carbon dioxide are available. So, as given so, and the calorific value is uh, about around half of what uh, we get from natural gas. Okay? So, as I told you, CO2 and N2 are not uh, going to be uh, participating in any combustion reaction. Uh, so, they are inert species basically. So, that brings down the calorific value as well as they uh, act as uh, say thermal sink. So, they uh, take the thermal energy. So, apart from the calorific value of these uh, uh, gases, uh, the other uh, the properties which are very important for our uh, analysis are density uh, which is dependent on molecular weight, then specific heat, thermal conductivity or thermal properties, viscosity and density together will be momentum uh, conservation used for momentum conservation, so transport properties. Then uh, again binary mass diffusivity is again uh, for use for mass conservation for a species and so on. So, these are the important uh, uh, properties which are uh, used in uh, analysis of uh, gases, uh, gaseous fuels apart from the calorific value. So, liquid fuels, uh, the advantage of liquid fuels is that they are uh, cleaner than solid fuels. Uh, we will come to solid fuels where we will see the heterogeneity there, uh, but much cleaner fuels, liquid fuels are much cleaner and uh, they have higher den energy density. Uh, for, for example, if you take the density of uh, gasoline, it is about uh, 800 kilogram per meter cube around that value. So, you can store more fuel in a smaller volume when compared to what you store uh, uh, in the same volume uh, with a gaseous fuel. So, that is one of the advantage of this, but only thing is you have to take care of the flammability of this. So, classify the liquid fuel properly. Uh, so, in some uh, cases no, if you just open the lid of the can, you will uh, the vapors will be automatically generated like petrol cans. So, highly volatile fuels. Some fuels will not uh, easily vaporize at all, but some fuels will very easily vaporize. The volatility of the fuel is very important here. Okay. Now, the disadvantage is you cannot just use a liquid fuel uh, straight into the combustion chamber. Just you cannot just open a tap and uh, uh, feed the liquid fuel. It's not like that. It, you have to uh, make sure that the rate at which you feed the liquid fuel, the, the, the same rate it vaporizes. So, the vaporization rate controls the entire process basically. So, liquid has to vaporize or evaporate to vapor and uh, this vapor participates in the predominant gas phase reaction with oxygen in or air in the uh, combustion chamber. So, that means the vaporization rate is very important. So, in order to understand the vaporization features, you need to understand what is the volatility of the liquid fuel. So, how fast the or how good the vaporization will be. So, uh, whether the liquid fuel will vaporize uh, instantaneously or it may we have to feed more heat to do that and so on. So, the volatility basically is a property which is governed by other properties like say flash point, fire point, boiling point, latent heat of vaporization and specific heat. Basically, you know the these three uh, are temperatures, flash point, fire point uh, and boiling point are temperatures which indicate uh, how much vapors can evolve from the liquid. Okay? So, uh, let us uh, uh, see when once the liquid starts to burn, uh, predominantly its surface will reach uh, more or less the boiling point. So, boiling point is one of the important tem temperature which has to be attained by the liquid. So, it will not attain the boiling point, it will be slightly less than that. Then the latent heat of vaporization is the energy you supply to vaporize the liquid to vapor. Then the specific heat is the heat which you have to supply to heat that liquid from the room temperature to the temperature close to the boiling point. So, these are the three 
important properties which uh, in combination will define the volatility of the liquid fuel. So, these are the three other additional uh, things we need. So, again flash point and uh, fire point are important in uh, uh, classifying the liquid fuels as they are uh, flammable or not. Okay? So, these are also important properties. So, we have these additional properties which we do not uh, uh, see in the gaseous fuel. So, these are additional properties which we have to uh, uh, characterize a liquid fuel for. Okay? So, now vaporization is a surface phenomena. Okay, so, from the liquid surface, they pray, vapors evolve basically. So, boiling, when you say boiling, that is a volumetric phenomena, vaporization is a surface phenomena. So, vaporization rate uh, depends upon the, the surface area which is available. So, what you do, you, uh, you have to uh, atomize the liquid fuel to make it uh, uh, small, uh, like uh, disintegrate into droplets of several size, size ranges. So, the atomization basically uh, disintegrating the liquid uh, into several droplets that depends upon two more properties liquid viscosity and surface tension. So, these properties also contribute. So, in a combustion chamber where you uh, spray uh, like uh, uh, inject the liquid into a spray of droplets, uh, you have to use atomizer. This atomization process depends upon these two properties liquid uh, viscosity and surface tension. So, the vaporization depends upon all these properties now. See, uh, to classify the fuel, we need fire point, flash point, and uh, for volatility, you need boiling point, later in the vaporization specific heat. Then for automation, see, for example, if you uh, take a very viscous liquid, it is almost impossible for us to atomize that. If you take, uh, say, water like uh, 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 fuel, like a viscosity which is equal to water type, then so uh, uh, atomizing a water will be much easier than atomizing a, say, oil, vegetable oil, and so on. So, these are the additional properties which we need uh, in our analysis when a liquid fuel is involved. Okay. Okay, then flash point. So, flash point is the uh, minimum temperature of the liquid fuel at which sufficient vapors evolve from the surface of the fuel. And uh, this fuel will be say for example, uh, careful experiments are conducted for this. We take the fuel in a brass crucible and try to heat it slowly, gradually and uh, stir it so that the entire uh, liquid is at a uniform temperature and uh, uh, monitor the temperature. Okay. Now, if you often bring an uh, ignition source towards its surface, uh, at a particular temperature you will see a flash of flame formed and it will disappear. What happens is basically when the uh, liquid has reached a particular temperature which is uh, equal to flash point sufficient amount of vapor has generated from the surface and that has mixed with the atmospheric air and a cloud of reactant mixture is formed over its surface and uh, upon uh, bringing in a ignition source towards that it instantaneously burns and a flash is produced. So, that is called flash point. Okay? So, you can see that the premixed vapor and air is available and uh, when ignition source is brought in, it, it burns. So, a premix flame basically forms and uh, disappears when you uh, introduce a pilot flame there. So, but for achieving that, that the liquid should be at a minimum temperature called flash point. Okay? So, fire point is a temperature which is higher than the flash point. Now, you continuously heat it. So, you are now uh, increasing temperature from the uh, flash point and slowly it increases. Now, what happens? You bring in the uh, ignition source to the towards the surface. You see a flash, and uh, when you remove it, the flash disappears, and uh, it continues. Now, at a particular point, temperature of the liquid called fire point. When you bring in the uh, ignition source towards the surface, you see a flame which is formed over the surface. And if you remove the ignition source, the flame doesn't disappear, and it, it uh, anchors to the uh, surface of the fuel. So, you can see a flame which is continuously formed over the surface and sustains there and um, this flame okay, receives the fuel from the surface and receives air from the ambient and uh, they, the fuel vapor and the ambient air mixes at the flame surface itself. So, this mode of combustion is called non-premix uh, mode and uh, that means at the fire point you see a non-premix flames. So, when you classify a fuel, you can see that flash point and fire point are the temperatures. If you have a very low flash point, 
it's dangerous. So it's for example, uh, for methanol, the flash point is 11 degrees centigrade. So normally the standard atmospheric temperature is 25 degrees centigrade. So that means that uh, when you just open the lid of the methanol container, you can see vapors evolving from that. So they are very, very inflammable. So when once readily vapors are formed, so even in petrol, it's the same uh, story. Okay, the petrol's flash point is sub-atmospheric uh, temperature flash point. So they are they are all, uh, very inflammable uh, liquids. So we have to be very careful in handling them. So to classify that, these two temperatures are very important. Lower the flash point and fire points, it's dangerous. So that uh, you can see that um, uh, enough vapor will be always available. Okay, but the flash point and uh, fire points are higher. That means that uh, you have to supply energy to from the atmospheric temperature it has to reach the flash point then only the enough vapor will be evolved okay so classification of the liquid fuels can be done based upon these values okay so boiling point the boiling point is the important temperature which is higher than the flash point now what happens here is uh, the entire liquid will uh, start to vaporize now once the liquid temperature reaches the boiling point then whatever energy comes from the ambient will be used for vaporizing the liquid to vapor. So that means that the energy coming in will be used only for latent heat of vaporization. So boiling point is the saturation temperature at a given pressure. Okay, at atmospheric pressure it is called normal boiling point. And other temperatures the, as the pressure increases, operation pressure increases, the saturation temperature also increase. Okay? So this is another important property. Uh, so higher the boiling point you have to heat that so that means that uh, the, it is not going to easily vaporize so you have to first heat that uh, towards this boiling point so that uh, uh, the enough vapors are produced and uh, continuous burning is taking place okay so